What's that? Yeah, it's as much as we can. The tubs I got condensed down. So it's been a, a lovely evening uh, last night. Um, the wind was coming down pretty heavy yesterday uh, after we packed out the moose. It was uh, actually a pretty good effort. Took 12 trips. We started about 10.30. I uh, got back to camp uh, fine about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. So we did pretty well. Um, so the afternoon was all about getting dried, uh, getting everything sorted, relaxing, and then recharging after you know, a pretty substantial effort. Um, and just so we go to bed, of course, as it tends to happen, uh, the unexpected does happen up here in the in the Alaskan wilderness. Uh, Black Bear pops out on the ridge over behind us, offering a 300 yard shot to Wildy, down on his bipod, took a good shot, uh, but the bear bolted for the alders. That is uh, something you have to deal with here, is there's a lot of thick cover, uh, and if you don't make a shot which anchors a bear immediately, it can escape. We're pretty sure we're going to find it in the alders, uh, but today's going to be about getting over there. Uh, should take us about an hour, hour and a half to get to that spot. Uh, hopefully bring him back and then see what the afternoon brings for us but a beautiful day for us um, we've had a fair share of weather both good and bad but it's nice to see it's on our side again for a change yeah, so, so after you thank you very much sir for once we're blessed with a beautifully sunny day the route to steve's bear takes us through a dense carpet of willow but it's low enough that we can navigate around the bushes rather than needing to cut a trail through them The heavy rainfall of the past few days is evident in the volume of water moving through the streams and onto the river below. Once more, the Sims G3 guide waders prove invaluable. We ascend the bright red berry patch that provided the backdrop for last night's encounter and onto the older patch into which the bear disappeared. Now, the search begins in earnest. It now comes down to good old-fashioned field craft, and Steve must use all of his knowledge and experience to find and follow the trail. Okay, we found him. I was worried to death. I was thinking Canada all over again. Well, we've been looking for about an hour and a half. Um, Ian and Tony have been on the other side of the valley, and me and Mark have been in this side of the valley, and we sort of pincered, and um, we've just seen broken bits of grass and I've been trying to pick my way through these alders and then all of a sudden bump there he was snagged up just above me in this thick stuff and we've just dragged him down here so we get a bit of a clearing to get him skinned out but you wouldn't believe how relieved I am so relieved when I've looked at him the shot was really good it's gone through it has smashed his left shoulder to pieces and but these are tough 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 animals and he just took off like last night as you saw as if he hadn't been hit but there he is, in all his glory. I am so, so happy. The team breathes a sigh of relief as we successfully recover the bear. But time is not on our side today. We need to make a swift return to camp and get packed up ready for our move to caribou country. Wildy makes his way back up the ridge with his prize and I can only imagine the emotional roller coaster he's endured over the past few hours. We are both ethical sportsmen and take our responsibilities to our quarry very seriously indeed. Wildy has trained hard both physically and mentally for this trip, honing his skills and meticulously preparing his equipment to ensure a swift and humane dispatch for the animals we are hunting. The very thought of leaving a potentially wounded animal to suffer or failing to retrieve his fallen quarry would be unbearable. Once back at camp, it's an exercise of military precision to get all of our equipment packed and stowed ready for transport. It's hard to believe that all of our clothing, bedding and equipment fits into these packs, although clearly there's an act to it. Our bush pilot Cole Hawkins of Hawk Air Alaska is here to transport us to our next location. 
As with all commercial aviators, time is of the essence, as every minute the plane is on the ground represents precious time wasted. There he was, gone. I feel a tinge of sadness as we depart what's been our home for the past two weeks. The time has flown by and we leave a lot of ourselves on the mountain below. It's the perfect day to be flying through the breathtakingly beautiful Alaska range. Our journey to Caribou Country is a masterpiece of aviation logistics. Our destination camp is just a few miles across the Alaska range, but requires a brief stopover at a local airstrip so we can switch planes. The larger M5 Mall is perfect for lugging heavy loads quickly, but landing on the smaller strips high in the mountains requires a lightweight Piper Super Cub. Whilst it doesn't have the carrying capacity of the mall, in the right hands the Super Cub can land on crazily small landing strips. It's late afternoon by the time Cole drops his last load and heads back to civilization. It's now a matter of erecting tents, organizing camp, fetching water from the creek and preparing for the next phase of our hunt. After the storms we endured at the previous camp, we make sure the guy lines are properly weighted down. This is a long valley and we don't fancy the prospect of chasing our tent all the way down to the bottom in the middle of the night. The view here is different from our previous location, but equally spectacular. As soon as our chores are finished, we're back out onto the ridge, glassing the valley below. Whilst we can't hunt on the same day we fly into camp, we can certainly familiarise ourselves with the environment and make a plan for tomorrow. <laughs> 